Good afternoon folks, I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply and this is a long overdue video on the classic billfold template set. Um, consists of four main pieces. Alright, you've got your wallet back right here. This one's your divider piece and then you've got two different styles of card pockets that you'll cut two of each of these out of. Um, so you'll have four card pockets total. Uh, it's a little bit smaller uh, billfold than the, our standard one that has the tape and the tie back in it. Uh, that I've been, I've had this in my wallet or my pocket for a couple of years now. Um, which it does have three pockets and then also these little hidden or you know side pockets here. Um, this one has a big cash pocket and then it's got the four card pockets and that's that's it. But it's a much more streamlined wallet and then also this one is entirely of leather. Um, there's no tape and Tyvek method or anything like that in it. Um, sorry, I should probably turn the volume down on my phone. So anyway, uh, the other thing with this one is, uh, with this video at least, I have tried all day to get ready to do this video and here we are, close of business, like I need to get home soon. So I kind of pre-did a little bit of stuff. Not a lot, just a little. But we're going to come down here to the work surface and we will see. This is my wallet back I already cut out. I actually dyed this um, days ago. I saw this cool video on Facebook using shaving cream to aid in dyeing leather uh, to get this cool marbly whatever look. Um, so this is some, I think I just used blue and red is all I used uh, on that shaving cream. Um, if you like, I can do a video on how this was done, but it's very simple. I've, I've gone back and looked for the video that taught me, and I couldn't find it or else I would have referenced it in, the, uh, in, in, in there so folks could go and watch the original. But it was a super easy job to do. So anyway, there's my back piece. Uh, cut out a 4 to 5 ounce um, uh, Wicket Craig Russet Leather. Okay, and then I've got two of one style of card pocket, I've got two of another style of card pocket, and then I've got this big divider piece, okay? Now the divider piece um, has some markings on it. One, it says right here, skive and fold this area. So we're just going to skive down that top part, fold that in half, and glue it to itself, and it'll leave a nice rolled edge on the top of the, the, the wallet on the inside, okay? Um, on this wallet back that I did already cut out, I actually went ahead also and burnished just that top edge. Um, the other edges will burnish once the thing's sewn together. Uh, and then also all these little, these four card pockets, I went ahead and burnished the tops of those. Alright, just the tops. That's, that's the only part you need to burnish. Okay. Now, um, there's still some prep work that needs to be done. But we've got it to where we can pretty much make this whole video in one run and not do a lot of pausing and coming back and blah, blah, blah. So these pieces, these T-shaped card pockets, we need to skive down the edges of these, just these three bottom edges below the T. Okay, and we just need to skive them a little bit. And the most important parts to skive are these corners right here. Or else when you stack your card pockets the way they are supposed to be in the wallet, you can see those corners, all right? And you don't want to see those corners, okay? Like once that's sewn down, there will be a definite corner right there and right there. And so if we just take and do a little bit of skiving, especially in those areas, then we're going to be golden. Okay, so I'm just using a little Osborne 925 skiver. Uh, Tandy sells a very similar one. Um, I don't think it's an Osborne brand, but I'd be willing to bet they're the exact same shape and style because this design's been around for way longer than I've been doing leather work. So, all right. So I'm just going to skive those three edges uh, down a little bit. I don't have to get them to paper thin or anything like that, but I do strive for consistency. Um, you know, the same depth all the way around. So there's one of them. Now I've got to do the other one. If you're not careful, you'll cut all the way through the leather, which I've been very, very guilty of many, many times. So I do try to go easy on this stuff. But I found, once I get a good run of it, um, the one thing about this skiving knife is, or this skiver, 
is that um, you don't go straight down with it. You want to turn it at an angle to your sky so that it's slicing and not pushing the blade through the leather. Okay, that's, that's the biggest tip I can give you with this. The other tip is keep the blade sharp and practice with it often and it's a great tool um, for small skives. Now, I did cheat on this piece. I went ahead and skived it earlier with my other skiving knife just to get her done. Um, and again, we're going to end up folding it in half and I'm just going to kind of pre-make that fold here so that once I put glue on it, it's ready to, uh, to go. Okay, the, um, the pattern shows you, you know, this line right here says skive and fold in half. Or skive and fold this area. Basically, you're splitting that very top T in half when you fold it over. Okay. So, again, I'm pre-folding it over a little bit so that uh, once I get my glue on it, It'll fold nicely. Um, you could use some double-sided tape right here if you wanted um, to hold it down, but I think I'm going to go with glue. So I got my contact cement. Luckily the top of it's not glued down today. Um, these glue jars, or any glue jar or can, if you put Vaseline around the, the, the uh, threads of the can or jar you're using, um, it won't glue itself shut. Um, I've said that a million times. I know it works, but honestly, I've never done it to my own glue can or jar. I just make sure not to close it with a bunch of glue all over the threads. Sometimes that's easier than, than other times. All right. So I put a, a strip of glue along that top there, and I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes for that to, uh, to kind of set up while I talk about what we'll do next. Now, this wallet pattern is confusing to some because it is purposefully designed so that the edges of the wallet are thinner. Okay? Um, that's part of the problem with a lot of wallets is after you stack six or seven pieces of leather, the edge of it's a half an inch thick and that gets kind of crazy. So how this works is, you can see the, the grid lines that I've drawn on here for you. If you put your T pockets on here first where they line up with the very edge of that line that's drawn there okay then the uh, top of the T pocket should butt up to the top of this larger uh, divider piece or the bottom yeah the bottom of the larger divider piece and then this piece goes directly on top of it once again with the tops of the this um, scallop here pushing up against the bottoms of the tea pockets and then when you're sewing the outside of the wallet together only this edge over here which is only one layer thick at any given point and then this layer down here um, those are the only two areas that are being sewn down this middle piece right here is only sewn down right here along this this area and again, what that does, it makes your wallet much thinner and nicer, a much nicer finished product, okay? All right, I need to fold this down evenly. And I'm going to stitch it. And I've gone back and forth on do I hand stitch or machine stitch this uh, project. And I think I'm going to hand stitch it, even though, like I said, I'm pretty pressed for time. And I do want to get this video out today because I made some promises to some folks that need this video. All right. So I pressed that down. And now I'm going to take my squeaky toy, which is not where it normally is. I wonder where it went. Someone moved it over there to a sewing machine. <laughs> A squeaky toy. Roll that edge good and flat. Okay, so there we go. Now we can go ahead and glue. Well, first let me show you this. People are like, well, how do I transfer these lines onto this piece? Real simple. Okay. Pull the paper off of it because I need to be able to see through it to do what I'm going to do. 
That's why we make all these other translucent materials so that you can do that. All right, now, this bottom line right here is where that the T pocket uh, pockets sew down to. So all I do is I'm going to lay this down to where I can see the bottom line through my template here. And I'm going to put it up against the bottom of the cut piece of leather. So now when I trace off that bottom line, that's right where it needs to be. Now, these are the insides of where those pockets sew to. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with those. Okay? So I am going to... Do, 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 do. Give me a second here, get my bearings. There we go. So I'm going to line up those with the very edge right here. And then, actually, I'm going to back it up just a tiny bit so that my line I'm going to draw does not show on my finished wallet. And I'm going to go all the way up to that little, the base of the tea pocket there. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and I'll do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so now I'm going to use my little tiny rougher thingy majig and I'm going to rough up this little area right here just on the insides of these so that the edges of those pockets glue down nicely. Okay. And then the same with just above this line right here. this roughed up a little bit. Not a lot, just enough. There we go. Now, like I said, this one is going to glue along that bottom line I drew. The sides of it will line up with the sides of this and the tea pocket will be directly under that tea pocket. Okay, and you want to push those up in there nice and tight so that they're as seamless as possible from that this top one to this one. And then the exact same thing over here, you're going to make sure it's nice and straight, and then that's where that piece will glue down. And the very first sew line we're going to have to do is to stitch the bottoms of these onto the, uh, the divider piece here. And I'm going to do both of them at one time so that I can stitch it all together at once and not have to keep going back and forth to the, to the stitching. Okay? So, a little dab of glue. And I'm going to put the glue just above that line that I drew where I just scuffed up that area. Okay. As soon as I get my brush to play along. And then down this side right here. I'm doing a terrible job. My hands are way too shaky today, apparently. That happens. All right, and then on this piece, I'm going to put some glue along the bottom. And then just on that little bitty tab right there where it's going to glue to that area right there. Okay. I'm going to wipe off some of this excess because, again, I did a terrible job of placing my glue there. Wipe it up under the table. And then I'll go ahead and glue up this other one and get it ready as well so that I can stick them both at once. Okay. 
I was just kind of use some scrap leg and belly area of this leather uh, that was clean enough to use. So that's why it's got this big roll in it and it keeps wanting to curl up on me. But once the wallet's put together, that won't matter. No one will ever see it. And there's not near as much scrap. All right. Now, a little dab of glue on the back of this piece and on the little tab of it. Again, we're just putting it right along that bottom piece and then on this tab right here. And I can put my glue away for just a moment. Okay, this first one's ready to set down now. So I'm going to get the second one over there. And again, I'm going to put this side of the T right where it belongs, up against that and even with it. And then twist that sucker down where it goes to where it's right above that line we drew. And stick her down. go okay I'm gonna do the exact same thing right here put my T piece down line up those sides line up that bottom and then press it down all the way across like that. Now mind you it's not supposed to go where this glue is right here. That'll be for the next piece that'll lay across there uh, once we're done with a little bit of stitching. Okay. Now stitching across the bottoms of these is pretty easy because my stitches don't even have to be nice and even. I'm gonna make them nice and even but I don't have to if I don't want to. <laughs> um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my eight stitches per inch um, pricking irons and my piece of rubber that I always use. And I'm going to go along here right at the very bottom edge of that and knock all my holes in it. Okay, over here to the other little pocket. Same song, different dance. There we go. Now, this nice top rolled edge right here, I don't necessarily have to do anything with it, but I'm going to go ahead and stitch it too. However, it's going to be seen in the finished project, so I'm going to use my wing dividers and draw me a nice pretty line there so that my stitches are nice and straight. do like stitching and on this wallet I think I'm going to use gray. We've got in some new stuff from Main Thread Company and I've been itching to use their, their gray thread. It is really pretty. Now, what I'm going to do is stitch those up. I'm going to bring my little stitching horse up here and uh, saddle stitch those things together. Um, I'm not going to do a um, 
lesson on subtle stitching in this video. I've done, you know, brief uh, parts of that in other videos that you can take a look at. But uh, for this one, I'm going to pause it. When I come back, we'll have that stitched up. All right. So we got those lines sewn. We sewed the two lines at the bottom of the card pockets, and then I sewed that top one there on that divider. Again, if you use a really good contact cement, it's not as necessary to have to sew that top one, but I really like stitching. So, there it is. Um, now, the next thing we have to do is we're going to take these two card pockets, and where they're going to go is we're going to shove them up against the very tops or the bottoms of the, the card pockets above them, like that. And at this time, the only place we're going to glue it is right along this edge. Because the bottom edge and that corner are going to be glued to the, the wallet back. Um, I do want to take a moment, though, and I just want to skive down just a tiny bit on these corners right here. Because once again, it'll show up in your finished wallet if you don't get rid of a little bit of that thickness in the corners. So not a lot. You don't, you don't have to do a bunch because you can see it from the inside of the wallet. But just enough to, to take the bulk out of those very corner pieces there. Um, another option would be even that you could kind of round those off a little bit if you wanted to. Use one of those uh, corner punches and, and round it off a little bit. So I've got glue already right here, but I need to put it on these two pieces. I say two pieces. Where's the... There it is. So I need to put it on the edge of... of uh, these and it'll be on this edge on this one and this edge on that one that way you'll see where those go together okay so we're gonna put a little bit of glue just on the last eighth of an inch or so of each of those set up for just a moment I'll pause the camera it's just gonna be two or three minutes but I don't want to have to make you wait so okay now glue has set up nicely so I'm gonna take and lay these pieces across here and then on the other side I'll just push it up underneath that little tea pocket to make sure it's nice and straight and press down Again, this is the only part that's glued right here, and we're about to stitch that part together. Okay. Got both of those done. Now, I can see a tiny bit of glue out from underneath the edges of those, just a little bitty bit. What I'm going to do after I'm done sewing this down is I'll just take a really sharp stylus and run along there and I should be able to lift that glue right up because it's only been drying for about 30 minutes or so. If it was like a day from now, it, it would be too far gone, but right now it's in the perfect rubbery stage to just be able to easily peel up with a, a small tool that you can run along there. Um, so, I need, now need to sew these down. So I'm going to take my wing divider and run along them. Alright. Now I'm going to take my pricking irons, knock me some holes in there, and get to stitching. Nothing new here. And I'm just going to stitch to the bottom of, of this uh, big divider piece. I'm not going to stitch all the way to the bottom of the card pockets. Because um, then also I risk uh, getting into the next area that there will be a stitch line, which is the very bottom of the wallet. 
And you'll see with how this wallet comes together, if you've built our other style wallet with the uh, um, Tyvek and uh, tape method, you, you know we had to cut a notch in the bottom of our divider so we could have our natural fold in our wallet. Well, with this doll, um, it will already have that in it. We won't have to cut anything. It's just going to happen all on its own. So, kind of a neat deal how that comes about. So, I'm going to pause the camera again, stitch these two sides up, and then we're going to start putting the back to this thing. Alright, folks, so here's where we're at now. We've got all this sewn together, and now it's time to attach it to my wallet back. Alright. So, um, oh, let me turn off there, Mr. I'm sorry. I always forget that, but I know it's a lot harder to hear me with that thing on. Um, so with the wallet back, um, I am going to go ahead and pre-sew along the top of the wallet right here. Um, I'm going to start right here in the end, go this way, and when I get to this end, I'm not going to tie off my uh, strings. I'm just going to keep going because by then I will have this glued into place and I'll start stitching around the rest of the wallet. Okay, if you notice the back is longer than the interior piece. So what we'll do is we're going to again stitch along that top side. I'm going to stitch down this side and I'm going to stitch this this bottom piece up to right here where that card pocket stops. Okay? Then I'm going to just stitch the back. See how there's that gap right there? Sorry, let me turn it a little more. There's that gap right there. I'm going to stitch the back until I get to the point that this would sew flat here, and then I'll keep stitching around the other side. Once again, that's how we get our natural fold in the billfold. And there's the size of the, 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 the finished billfold, like I said considerably smaller than the normal uh, billfold or the other billfold um, pattern that we have available. So yeah. So what I've got to do is first stitch across the very top here and then I'm going to come back and uh, unpause the camera and I'll glue these two sides together and I'll stitch around another quarter or so of the wallet or about a third I guess and then we'll glue up the other side and stitch the final side and we're going to do some edge work that'll be that so stay tuned folks uh when i when i come back i'll have a stitch line right here all right <clears throat> so this top area here i already uh did a stitch down like i said i really i'm liking how that gray thread looks with this really marbly colorful uh veg tanned um wallet back here and then while I was still paused I went ahead and put um, contact cement right here on this edge and then this edge but only as far as this card pocket is going to go okay I don't want I don't want the glue to get out here in the center where it'll be in a blank space because then you'll see that nice shiny glue on your finished project and we don't want that so I also put glue on the back side of just this edge here and here and I'm going to carefully stick those two together. Okay, and I'm going to start out right here in the corner. So I want those corners to line up nicely. And then I'll press it along here at the top, making sure that these card pockets stack up on top of each other really well. Okay. And then I'll press it together along this side over here as well. Just like that. Now, I um, didn't, I, I failed to show this on camera, but obviously before I sewed this, I actually ran a um, stitch groover down and around my wallet back. Um, I wanted to do that just so I'll have a nice clear channel to sew in, and also it'll help that thread set down over the surface of the leather for the longevity of the wallet. Um, so yeah, it does protect the thread a good bit. So now I'm going to take my, my, my brick and irons here. And I'm just going to go along poking holes. 
again. Um, if you can see on the camera, I'm doing it at a little bit of an angle. That's not because you should be sewing at an angle, but more because my thing here, my piece of rubber has been used so many years that it's not flat. It's very warped. So even though it looks like I'm doing it at an angle, I'm actually doing it perpendicular to the leather, uh, which is what it ought to be. I really need to make myself a new one of these. It's just some uh, Poundo board from Tandy uh, glued to a piece of very heavy, like, uh, skirting or what's that called? The uh, shoe sole leather. All right, so as I do these holes, I'm going to go all the way um, to the end of this uh, this pocket here that's already glued down. But then I'm going to continue across this blank area that won't be sewn to anything on the inside, all the way to the point of right there. Okay, if you if you line up these other this other side over here loosely then you can tell where you need to get your holes all the way to uh, which is about right there and uh, then I'll glue the second side down and continue sewing around back around to the top of the to the wallet um, and that'll that'll again make it to where this wallet has the natural fold in it and if and uh, it makes it to where when you close the wallet it doesn't have like wrinkles and stuff right here um, also after you know after it's been broken in in your pocket or whatever like let's say you take it out of your pocket you throw it on the dresser at night it stays closed if you don't put that gap in there then chances are especially if you have a couple of dollar bills in there it'll pop open like that and that's how it'll always rest is in the open position and it's just not professional not right i guess i don't know what to say but it, to me it wouldn't be right if i threw my wallet down on the table and it and it opened up like that so that's why we do that so it has that natural fold to it so i'm gonna sew um sew that line that i just talked about all the way around to about here and then when i come back we'll glue that second side down thank you all right so just like i said i sewed up uh this side right here and then across the bottom just past the halfway point to where um now I have put some glue on these two sides here and I've got to marry them up to these sides here. So um, what I'm going to do is start down in the corner again and I'm just going to pinch the two corners together as nicely as I can. I'll hold those together with my finger and then I'm going to press all this together making sure that these card pockets stay right on top of each other okay because otherwise they won't look right we don't want that there we go and now we've got that pinched together right there and I'll just go along here and press it together along back towards this the center point here all right so there we go. Now I have to punch my holes and uh, keep on a sewing. All right. Now it's hard to punch holes when you've got your your wallet folded up like this. So what I'll have to do is put it on the edge of my bench like this, and then I'll go through it with my uh, my my prick and irons and um, punch them that way. So here we go. side right here so that I can come back around to the very first stitch over there. I know my hands are in the way, I apologize. Alright. 
So we got all those holes punched. Um, now I'm just going to stitch up those last two sides. And when I come back, we're going to start doing edges and be finished with this wallet. Alright, so we got that all nice and sewn up. And then I went ahead and sanded on these uh, these three edges right here. Um, just to get the, the uh, glue off of them and stuff like that. So now I'm going to edge them and um, burnish them. And we're going to make a pretty nice wallet out of this. So, yeah. I'm using a Berry King Zero uh, grooved edger. That's pretty much just right for this little thing. Because again, this wallet's not very thick because it's only two layers of leather thick at its thickest points. So, that's kind of nice. This is the hardest part to edge since it's already folded over here. But if your edge is nice and sharp, you can do it. The funny thing is, when I uh, was playing with the shaving cream dye stuff, I was just using some crappy scraps and bellies and stuff like that. And uh, so, yeah, this piece of leather is really. Uh, it's not very firm and stuff. Uh, it's, if I were selling this wallet, I wouldn't have used that piece of leather. Um, but since it's just going to be a display, that's fine. Um, I, I mentioned earlier about the shaving cream dye job. If, uh, if that's something you're interested in me doing a video on or something, or you haven't seen the video on, on doing that, um, I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, I'm, it is a really unique way and it has a cool look and uh, we all are looking for something different, you know. Um, and it's simple. It's, it's a little bit messy uh, if you, you just need a giant piece of cardboard or something to do it on. But other than that, it's, it's very easy to do. So, Alright, so that's going to bring us to the end of our video. Again, I'm going to burnish those last edges right there, but that's, I'm not nothing I need to do on video. Um, if you've made it this far in my videos, then you've probably uh, seen me do it a hundred times. Um, I'm going to use, I've, I've been playing with a new uh, product. Um, it's not a new product, but it's new to me. Uh, Tokenol. Um, thinking about carrying it in the store. It does make some pretty neat edges uh, pretty pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I just you know, from what I've seen, I'll spread it on the edge and then just burnish it in with a stick or even my finger. And then, um, yeah, it, it does a really good job. I've, I've been impressed with it so far. So anyway, that's that for this video. Uh, again, I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Weather Supply. And uh, if you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, if, there, if you have any questions or anything, you can always put them in the comments. And I am more than happy to, uh, to review them and, and, and answer them to the best of my knowledge. And uh, even if you had a... a something you want to see in future videos all you got to do is say something and uh, we can make it happen so um thank you very much and have a great day